talking about? So we're talking about Will and Jada going on on air, going into the public eye and clearing the air about uh, Jada's affair. Oh, okay. And, and mine wanted to talk about this, so I'm like, all right, you know what, maybe we could put Islamic spin on it and see what the Muslim reaction to Jada and why are you so happy right now? So what what's up? No, you, I, I, I haven't seen this happen in a long time. My <laughs> love salacious issues. Look at look no. at the face. Look I know, dude. He's, he's so happy he's right now. Bubbling with joy. Look how happy. He looks like Hadia, dude. He's so happy. He looks like a little baby, dude. Looks, you see, looks like a five year old. He loves yeah. salacious. So why don't we let you experience Listeners, this? if you ever have any salacious stories, Sultans and Sneakers will always be open. <laughs> As a podcast platform for you, if you had any like um, aberration to the point where all these guests are getting transgender for the next two years, right? Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, the thing is, I didn't even know what this was. I mean, I didn't know the yeah. thing going on between Will and Jada. I mean, I didn't even know what this whole thing was. You don't I know mean, about Will and Jada, bro? What the no, hell? Oh I don't know. Where have you been? Look, when I get they had to come to the red table to talk on, about. When it. I go in in the morning, I go to news.google.com. Why are we friends with them? And I look at like the politics. I look at like the COVID stuff. I look at the market and the health stuff. I don't watch the entertainment stuff. I don't care. That's all dumb. boring. No, that's cool. You're right. Suppo it's, it's, by the way, it's our thing is, uh, they're saying that our, our feet is choppy. Well, Who's watching TV upstairs? It's just late at night. <laughs> oh, wait. And he at the crib here? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean. I don't know. Well, um, anyways. So we'll keep going. So the re what's interesting to me is like how like Jada spun everything. Like um, and and and, I, and I, I became aware of the Will and Jada stuff from like the Red Pill Bros, like Rolo Tomasi, this guy named Pat Stedman, yeah, these people on Twitter, and it's like the, it's called the emasculation of Will Smith on like national TV or I think it inter internet, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, so basically, it was like how it's a women's world, how everything is like how she defines this frame. Right, you know, boy Fahim always talks about frame, right? So he's, you know, in the beginning, she's basically talking about, well, it's all love. So number one, she establishes that, like, oh, you know, everything I did is because it's about love, like it's a general thing. And then she spun it. She was like, and it gave me a lot of healing. And I was like, healing, man, dude was up all up in you. Is that healing? Right, dude, but you're not married. Techni but technically, they were uh, separated at that time. They were like, no, nah, they were taking they're, a they're, break. They were no, he says that they thought it was over. Yeah, yeah, but they were taking a break, right? But um, technically, they were still married. They were not like from our, you know, let's say for example, let's say Will and Jada were Muslim. They were, I mean, their nikah would have still. They didn't get a divorce. They were just separated, yeah. right? But so I don't think Ahlul Kufar operate that way anyway. Yeah, right? that's yeah, true. That's a good. It's a good point. So I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know why Will was so upset by it. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that you mentioned that, but the idea was because he was like trying to um, say like, "Well, you transgress." He's like, "No, I don't think it was a transgression." That's what she was kind of saying. So she was basically justifying what all. What was of the it. word she was using? She was using some word about um, not. He didn't say um, entanglement. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? I was, so for some reason, he said that. I was thinking of like jujitsu. I was like, I, I'm, I'm still laughing. I'm still laughing at Ahlul Kufar. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't say Ahlul Kufar. He's like the Ahlul Kufar. Yeah, you, yo, he, he, goes, he, he goes, yeah, are you Ahlul Kufar? <laughs> yeah. But but, no, but no, I, I know what you mean. But yeah. but, but I but I think it it, it it pops up now, as we understand, um, you know, relationships and the way male female dynamics work is that what if will if the sh what if it was on the other foot what if will had gone off and had an affair with like a 20 oh he would totally have been canceled that's the point that's the whole thing like and jada you know yeah yeah and then like uh <laughs> towards the end of it he was saying oh well i got you back too like well what are you alluding to you you had an affair as well or because he wouldn't elaborate he, what, yeah he, he, but yeah yeah i got you back like he, yeah I'm gonna get you back or something. No, 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 he said he got he got her back. Right. So, I, but when you, wait, said, so, you said something, so she, she she legit had an affair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She admitted to it. Yeah. They were supposed to be like separated at the time. They weren't. They're, they're they taking thought like it was a break. They're taking over. like a break. Yeah. You know? I personally don't care about like I would just I really want to know what was happening. Like, okay, this is like I've been seeing it like all these places. I actually want to know what happens when they come to the red table and talk. It was just kind of weird. What was that thing she was saying? Like, there's one thing that uh, you mentioned that. You said something, and I want you to elaborate. What do you mean it's a woman's world? Because of how everything is. Like, so for example, right? Like, when, how high is the divorce rate in America? Pretty high, right? Mm hmm. 
So when you think about like how many how many friends do we have? Like you know, we you and I we have friends not in this room, but like people that we know who got divorced. I know a brother who's got like he sees his kid like four weeks out of the year. Subhanallah. Right, and the and and it's his wife got knocked up by some other dude while he was they're married. Right, it's like if there's and if there's any so if there's any case if there's any cause of like who was at fault. I mean, duh. But like yeah. that's the way it's framed, and I was um th- th- there was there was a a couple that was going through um they're going through some issues actually they, they, there was like there, there was a divorce and they asked me to come in and try to reconciliate they being like the, the woman's side right they asked um, you of all people yeah yeah I, I I used to be in peer mediation in high school actually really <laughs> yeah yeah Were you really yeah yeah I was a, peer a Republican med- peer mediator <laughs> no yeah. dude I think it's one of those things he's probably really good at it. his jokes are around with us but I think when he comes on he's probably pretty serious no because yeah. he's blunt so it works <laughs> no so no so how so does this peer mediation so, work so this, so like you know some sister came to me and like uh, and my wife and wanted to talk and like kind of expose like hey, this is what's going on right and so I went and spoke to the brother and you know he was like checked out but from his frame of view, he's also factoring in that, listen, if I continue with this relationship, if I go back into it, and if I have kids, and it's already kind of rocky, now when I have kids, I'm really opening myself up. I'm exposed. You follow what I'm saying? Because if the marriage, because it's already rocky, and that's why I like step, that's why I, I gave her the divorce, right? And let's say I take her back, and then we have children, and it's, and it's these issues aren't fixed, right? Who ends up getting away? The, the custody always goes to the mother in that way, right? There's always the. It seems like there's all. Whenever there's a divorce, there's always this narrative that who's the, the guilty party is more often the husband than the than the wife. That's what yeah, I see at yeah. least. You know, you know, the cool thing about Europe is that um, by default it's fifty fifty. Mm. Like in America, it's opposite. Like usually the default claim is going to be for the woman, right? But let me just talk about this for a minute, dude. There we go. More no, I mean, I can't understand what kind of man would look at a woman who cheated on him. Like, I would never look at that woman the same. I'm a woman? I mean, how do I know you're not banging the mailman? Or, you know, I mean, how do I know who you're not banging? I mean, at the end of the day, I will never trust you. Every time I look at your face, I'd be like, you're a cheater. Like, you're disgusting. Mm. I would look at her like she's a prostitute. I'm sorry. I would just be like, you know what? I can never trust you again. Hey, these are old, like, Neanderthal principles, okay? We've yeah, evolved call me a sexist. as human beings. Oh, absolutely. Okay? I, I'm the patriarchy. I don't care. Jeez, what is I this mean, guy thinking? Look, uh, but I, Times I, have changed, I don't know man. how anybody... You have no, to have mercy. Look, look if, if, you have if, to love if, people. If, that is, if, if somebody is willing to accept that, you might as well just be a cuck and have someone, you know, just smash your wife in front of you. Whoa. I mean, there's no... No, I'm serious. There's no difference between Whoa. that. If you're gonna if you're gonna allow yeah. someone to get away with that That's and be like, quickly. yo, you know what? I mean, no, but <laughs> I, I, on a real principle, how do you <laughs> how do you actually trust that person again? Yeah, there's no way. Could you trust somebody that cheated on you? I mean, it depends. What the <laughs> hell? But right, he's like, is she hot? <laughs> but I don't care if this woman was like, I don't know, Penelope Cruz, bro. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you if you cheat on me. You are done. Like I, I hate you. I want you to like. Just, I, I, you don't exist to me no more. No. I mean, I, I don't even want you to call me, text me, look at me. Don't even breathe near me. Bye. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like Whoa. I mean, no. I'm seriously. I, I loyalty. The accent changed a little bit when you said bye. That's yeah. bye, Felicia. That's what you yeah. do. You know, bye, Felicia. From no, no. Yeah, he, this happened always in Egypt. You, so don't worry about it. And he's, dude, he's he doesn't know it. the bye, Felicia. It's okay. It's okay. What's wrong with your ass? Anyway, mm-hmm. listen. <laughs> 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 Look, the um, the thing is though, I mean, for me, I think loyalty is 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 especially for men. One of the reasons why in Islam we have this concept of ghira and not being at the youth is because any rational man would feel like, oh, like, I, I mean, like someone punched him in the balls or in the stomach. If, if no, I mean, if someone's looking at his woman or like getting even aroused by that, it would bother them, right? Yet alone sleep with her. Like I'm sorry, dude. That's unforgivable to me. Can you can you explain what the youth means? I think there's a lot of white people. Like, the youth yeah, is American Muslims. American it's Muslims don't know this stuff. Space Y O U T H D A Y O O T H. The youth. It sounds like I a. I was joking. The youth. Anyways, the youth. Uh, oh yeah. 
The thing is, it, it means it, a cuckold, someone who yeah, enjoys. Yeah, someone who basically has no shame over the women around his, his women folk, his wife, daughter, mother. No protectiveness. No, yeah, no okay hater, yeah. and he's not ashamed that people are looking at her or speaking ill of her or sexual about her. And these people are, will not enter paradise. I mean, these kinds of people are like a, a, a certain type of people because more more than likely <laughs> they're like probably pimping out their daughters and their and their mothers. Elderly, I mean, so. I mean, oh, I mean it's yeah. not even that that extreme. It's it's people who just ha don't have any protective jealousy over no, their No, but I'm saying it's more than likely folk. someone who's doing that is probably encouraging his women folk to make haram. Yeah. You know? I mean, more than but likely. But does this, pardon me, I'm a little slow, but does this have something to do with the whole women's world thing? I'm still like trying to yeah, understand. No, I, you know, is what it he, only on a divorce no, level of no, custody? No, or? no, no, no. What he's saying, he's right in some way because right now in the Me Too movement and this whole leftist feminist movement, the idea is that women have sexual freedom too. If a, men cheat all the time and women go back to them, so why can't women cheat and men also go back to them? Mm -hmm. Right, like oh, we all do it, right? But it's not in, in, in do it biologically, and even like by historically, it's very uncommon for a woman to be like uh, to, to be like that way, like a man is, right? I mean, I mean, a man can have you know in our context have four wives, or you know other in their context he can go out and you know have a girlfriend, <laughs> go to the strip club. Women generally they, they don't get turned on by this stuff. G generally they stay away from it. They like they're monogamous. Um because they they like the emotional security. They're hypergamy, right? I mean they they may they may look to upgrade, but they're never going to be at the same time concurrently like trying to, you know, be around with different men, right? Mm -hmm. And there's even done a Except now the trend has changed now. There's a lot Well, of now they're now, encouraging yeah. this behavior yeah, yeah, in yeah. women in with the rise of Statistics the sexual changed, revolution. Yeah. Yeah. But e idea, even even when you they encourage it though, it's usually with a lot of the um, more abused women, people who have rocky backgrounds, you know. Well, I'm gonna be uh, who, hey, some of them get mad, but it's also the spinsters, the ones that are like forty years yeah. old and got no goddamn children and they you know, spent the whole life just, you know, messing around and now they have now they justify it by saying I'm sexually free. I'm an independent woman. Oh, I'm breaking the patriarchy. Mm. I'm shattering the glass ceiling. Wow. All this nonsense. <laughs> I like all the examples you got. But uh, the you expression with it too is rolling Yeah, no, because and that's what they do. They, they, they think they've accomplished something, but no woman. <laughs> you are alone by yourself sitting with your ten cats <laughs> eating dinner by yourself. Ten. You are you are miserable. Your womb has dried up. You have no air. Wow. You have no offspring. Now he's even more no, Sure. This is the only like, time no, you left. I'm sorry. Like, this is the only time you left. value as a woman, I'm sorry, to, to a male who's potentially looking to mate with you is low because you can't produce anything anymore. Mm. You've given your most, your your childbearing years, you've lost them. You've you've sacrificed them yeah. because you thought you were being independent. You thought Keep you were, this rant. No, it's true though. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to... I mean, some women have reasons for that, right? I'm talking about women who consciously make that decision, right? They thought they were being smart and they were independent. And Lord, they were being... can I ask you a serious question? Yeah. Not being serious. Did you rehearse that? <laughs> Did you rehearse that? No, he didn't rehearse it. Mort, Mort used to be a freestyle rapper. You know that, right? Mort, you know how Mort started, bro, before I continue the question? Mort... He used before, to hang out with the Immortal Technique. No, he said, no, forget about freestyle. And then on AOL chat, what was it? Uh, what was it AOL chat called again? The AOL Messenger? I guess AIM. AIM. Yeah. He used to, he used to do the no, freestyle. No, Amir used to try to message me his rhymes because he couldn't freestyle. So I'd come back while after eating, looking at some other stuff. I'd come back and just like, you he know. He copy and pasted it. I didn't know about copy and pasting back then. What copy and paste more? <laughs> Look how serious you got. Anyways, oh. more. So after that rant that you said, this is a serious question because I think people should know. Do you respect women or do you not respect women? After that, is that a world. real question? It's a real question. I, think I respect know. women that, that deserve to be respected. Oh, very good. So right? because not, it's like I don't respect every man. Yeah, just like, just you like have men. principles. Yeah. you have principles. Exactly. So what I'm saying is that I'm not saying that there are women out there who have unfortunate circumstances. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the women that rode that leftist wave, and the, the left told them you're going to be free. You're gonna be great. You don't need a man. You don't need. You know, there's a woman called Erin Pizet, and she talks about this. She was an early pioneer of the feminist movement, and she says the objective of the movement early on was to move away from capitalism being the enemy to making the other gender the enemy, to telling women that the family is no longer man, yeah. woman, and child. It's just mother and child now, and that women are free to do what they want to do. 
And what I'm saying is that a lot of these women now, they're ending up miserable. And they can mask it around with all these slogans of being independent and, you know, you know, unbreakable. All the stupid terms they throw around, like <laughs> right? this dumb term that make themselves feel better. You know, don't fat shame me. You know, I mean, all these crazy <laughs> things just to feel better, all the empowerment. Why do you, well, have you ever thought about why they need all these empowerment groups? Because they're feeling like crap. If you want to feel like crap, you don't need empowerment, right? I'm already empowered, right? A lot of these women who are confident and, and strong, they are in relationships as mothers, as wives, as children. I mean, who have children. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what will break all of this on its face. The, what's happening right now with COVID-19 and the impending breakdown of the economy and all the, you know, the economic slowdown that will break down the security that some of these people who think that they're independent and they want to break free of of men and they don't need their man anymore and well guess what what will happen when society the fabric of society starts falling apart where is it going to be your security that you were so dependent on and, and that you threw away in favor of feminism and you you wanted that so i'll tell you this Ooh. if 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 society collapses right do you know how <laughs> I feel bad for them, but do you know how quickly women are going to get abused? I I'm sorry to say that. I mean, this whole idea of you being independent and strong and doing mm. it by yourself. I'm sorry, woman. You're going to need a man to protect you. That's what you mean. Okay, good. No, good, I'm good. saying like, I think, I mean, let's go back in a time where you couldn't go out and just call the police for help. Or, or you couldn't, or you, you know, walking alone at nighttime was a problem because people saw you as, you know, fresh meat. Like, now I'm not talking about sexually. We're talking about the food you have on you, the money you have on you, the clothes, even the shoes you have Open on target, you. Open target, yeah. Right, target, I mean, yeah. you are a target, right? It's, you know, big fish eat little fish, right? So what I'm saying is, if it ever collapses and gets to the point where, you know, people are going and breaking people's homes for food, women will be a target. And mm -hmm. th this independent women thought that children, you have right. yeah, about how you, you're equal to men, you will know very quickly that you're not equal to men. And I'm saying, I'm not saying that women don't have a place. Women are very strong in other ways. But stop trying to make yourself equal. Here's my thing. Don't make a woman's worth be dependent on her equality to a man. Yeah. Because you're never going to be equal to us and we're never going to be equal to you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It, you are a woman and your worth is given to you already by your creator. Yeah. It's given to you as you are. Yeah. You don't have to change it. You don't have to make anything. Now, if you want, if you're fighting for your rights to be a woman, I'm with you. Yeah. We don't want you to be abused and oppressed, fine. But if you're fighting for your right to be trust, somehow be equal to me in yeah. and, and, and every way, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to put myself behind some dead cause, some unrealistic cause. Yeah, yeah. It's not gonna no, work. That's why I asked that question originally about respecting women because I wanted you to clarify what you just did, what you just said right now. Because when you go on a rant like that, people just shut their minds off and they don't realize and ask you for your other principles too that that cause you to have Well, they can go like back that. to the show we did with those feminist girls and they can could, they could find out how I feel about it. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I relate it down. If they yeah. give me a plan of action, we'll look at it and say, okay, yeah, we agree with this. We don't agree with that. I'm not just going to sign on board and be like, yeah, we're girl power. You know, like, yeah, you don't know. No, I don't and, and you know. has been very happy. Uh, this is awesome. I, 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 I'm in a very happy place, yeah. <laughs> Morty, you brought up uh, a really important point that got really uh, could, could get a, uh, excuse me, could have gotten lost in the fray. Uh, you said something about one of these capitalist women who, sorry, one of these women who was saying that we need to remove capitalism yeah. as the, Feminist a, the as the enemy and put um, the Men, gender the war, gender, the yeah. gender war. Yeah. Now, this is an important thing that we need to kind of beat into our brain that when these intersection wars happen, whether about whether it's man, man versus woman or between the different races and, and things like that who always gets ignored <laughs> the capitalist yeah. the one who's abusing them well what happens when when all the, these um in these corporations when they're where they're building up uh, diversity or in in uh, uh in college campuses where they're trying to build up affirmative action you know i'm not saying everything is bad but i'm just saying when these debates are happening who's still benefiting in all this Capitalism. It's always the capitalists, the people who are making money at the top, the people who who ultimately see the inherent truths, like what you just talked about. You know, uh, well, in the breakdown of society, the ultimate power will belong to the people who have might, strength, wealth, 
money, status, uh, connections, uh, knowledge, um, you know, all these things are the inherent truths of what build humanity, you know, and the people who don't recognize these truths, they get destroyed. These critical race theorists, <laughs> the people who, who will get gobbled up in the moment society falls apart because they don't recognize these truths. Why do you think the U.S. government uh, and the, the think tanks of the world they completely ignore these hocus pocus theories no about um, because they yeah. they recognize the inherent truth of what society is built on. They recognize thousands of years of how humanity has survived. What what they recognize as ultimate power. Why nuclear weapons are so important, and that why disarmament and things like that are a pipe dream because people want power. They know the one who holds the biggest stick will. Uh, we'll, we'll be able we'll, we'll, we'll be able to dictate the terms yeah. they, they, it's still the same rules as a playground when we were kids when we saw the bully on the playground the biggest kid he was always the one who was the most respect the most feared the, the one who had the most money because he was able to steal it from other kids those inherent truths still hold true on a macro level and that's what these maniacs these people who have infiltrated um, uh, Muslim uh, MSAs across Australia, they they they're teaching kids complete crap. Ooh, shots fired. Yeah. Australia, they are. No, I'm sorry. but here's the thing. Listen, Don't uh, apologize. Uh, wait. One thing I, I just want to say brother. this though, real quickly though, what is that I had to hold back. I was, on, I was on the verge of swearing. Wait, no. The <laughs> fact that you get to talk about CRT or you know or gender issues or whatever it may be, right? This is a luxury because of the fact that people who were mighty and strong <laughs> laid down the law and create the society that you have today, yeah. right? It's kind of like this argument that we have when I apply it to this argument that we have as, as a second generation being in America, right? We have the luxury to argue about, are you Salafi or Sufi or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. do you have this masjid or that I know masjid? What you mean by that, yeah. But earlier on, the, uh, the people who came here didn't have that luxury. Mm -mm. They just had to make a masjid. Yep. Right. They used all they used all the resources, combined the effort, and fought their way through and made it happen. That work, that struggling, that blood, sweat, and tears is what gave you and now today yep. the luxury to argue about things that inherently wouldn't matter if they start shutting down masjids. Yeah. You yep. would be like, oh my god, if the masjid started shutting down, <laughs> you wouldn't care about whether it's a it's a mosque that has an all female panel or not, <laughs> or a, a female. <laughs> Space, you wouldn't care about it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't care about these things, right? You would care. Oh, we need to have a place, a place to pray. So, to put things in perspective, what Sim is saying is that might is right. Meaning that if you, people who have the power, people who control things, people able to lead, people who, and some of this is biological. This is what some of these people don't want to admit. Men have certain features that are different than women and women have certain features that are different than men and each can excel in their own way and that's why the Quran says there are garments to one another yeah. why is it a garment? because you can't just cover the left side and have the right side open right? you gotta be covered, you gotta be clothed right? both sides have to be equal in their length in order for it to come by and actually bond and make a garment for yeah. you right? you cannot just be have one or the other but when you try to take away the other what happens? if you pull this garment too much here it's not gonna be yep. it's gonna move a, a different way so Allah has created a balance, but they're trying to mess with that balance. Why? Yeah. Because they feel like if they know better and they feel like they, and, and the worst part about it is they're trying to make people believe that we are, our cause of Islam is social, social justice activism, right? That we are SJWs, that this is what Islam is about. No, Islam is not, is not about social, you know, social justice activism it's about islamic activism yeah right we have our own concepts of what we believe is equal and what's not equal what's fair what's unfair what's halal and what's haram right you don't dictate to us what is, is that and right now they're trying to change that right they're trying to say listen um you know whether our you know these new things today are different so we gotta adapt and we've got to think about what how we are you know out there mm. being how we're being represented right now. And I, and I feel like sometimes they are ashamed of their own religion. And yeah. so they try to change it to adapt to, to become uh, more friendly or to be accepted by a certain group of people, a certain persuasion. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like, you know what, that can happen on the right or the left. It's not about just the left 